And Sir Michael Palin's written a book, and here it is, inspired by his trip called Into Iraq. And he joins us now. It's always lovely to have you here. Thank you so much. Very nice to be here. If you uh, look at the sort of Foreign Office uh, website, it will say warns against all travel to Iraq. However, yeah. this was on your list. I think that's the, that, that's the first qualification for where I go to. You know, the Foreign <laughs> Office says, no, don't go there. It happened with Pakistan when we were doing the yeah. Himalaya journey. And, of course, it happened with North Korea. Um, so what's the draw, then? Well, I think all travel is a, trying to find out something you didn't know before, mm. yeah. trying to expand your mind, and also, in a way, to look behind the headlines. Mm. There are certain countries that are branded bad countries for some reason or other, and it, with Iraq, it was just because there's been 30 years of, of violence there. But, I mean, the people themselves still have to live there. Mm. Children have to be sent to school, people have to have their houses, they have to have their jobs. I mean, I, I, I think it's just... It, it, it's, it's sad that you'll get a country with just one single bad reputation. Yeah, and I always want true. to look behind that and, and explore the better side of a country, I suppose. But yeah. on May the 5th, 1950, your dad yes. gave you a book. <laughs> yes. Yes, the first book I ever was given, a nice hardback, it was called Tales from the Arabian Nights, mm. and it was inscribed to Michael from his daddy, oh. uh, May the 5th, 1950, for my seventh birthday. And that book, I still have it. It's just, it, it changed, well, it changed my life. At seven, I was still changing my life. <laughs> and then puberty and all that sort of thing. I mean, so we're not getting all that sort of stuff. But, uh, but it, did, uh, it did make me look at the world in a different way because yeah. I was sort of, at that time, it was sort of Enid Blight and Biggles stories. And here was something of an exotic world mm. of uh, dome buildings and minarets and people wearing turbans and all that. And the, the stories of Sinbad the Sailor and what happened in Baghdad and all that just, just opened up an amazing exotic world. It did, but then the reality of that is somewhat different because you start out in Turkey yeah. and then you cross the border and immediately there's this sense of sort of heightened awareness and restrictions and, yeah. and, and yeah, danger, yeah. I guess. Yes, I mean, we knew that it was going to be difficult mm. um, because the country is still on a bit of a military footing, you know. There, there, there are checkpoints all along the road. So if you go sort of 50 miles, you'll have three checkpoints you have to go through and all that. And there are armed men, armed police there. And even though you have a letter of permission to go through, they just mm. say, well, we're in charge here. Wait in that side channel now, we'll let you know when you can go through. So it's, it's, it's hit and miss. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there are some, still some horrible things to see there and, and destruction and chaos, which they haven't cleared up yet. What sort of protection did you have? Who was around you? Well, we had a very good guy who, who ran um, and got untamed borders. Um, <clears throat> he had been taking people into the country for a long time, so he knew quite a lot about Iraq. And there was a, um, a security man, ex-army man, Peter, who was... I think he was there to keep an eye on me in case I, in case I, I suddenly clapped out, you know, because Michael Payton was getting on a bit now. You know, really, <laughs> he's going to be 79 soon. Keep an eye on him. He walks up the stairs and all that. But he was there also to just make sure, look around. You know, he had rules that... I, I know they had to be there, but they're tiresome at the time. Like, <clears throat> you can't really leave the hotel on your own in any of the towns and cities, because you'll be a target, as he put it. Kidnapping target? Well, I suppose so, yeah. That's right yeah, kidnapping there, isn't it? That's one of the Maybe. reasons the Foreign Office... But anyway, I mean, it, it was... Um, and that's really sad for someone like me who loves sort of going up the, the alleys and the yeah. sort of finding out the town for myself. So, but that was good advice, and, and we needed that. And then uh, you, you went to Mosul, which, of course, was a <clears> city <throat> where only five years ago, <clears> 10,000 people died, <clears> and the atrocities that came out of there, and there is still... Yeah evidence of that everywhere, the wreckage. Yeah. But the thing that struck you from that was the children who were playing yeah. amongst that, that there is this real yeah. sort of... Well, I was encountering the children in the wreckage of the old town. And you just... These beautiful old buildings, and they're all... Most of them are smashed. One or two are still occupied. And that's where I met some children. And they came up. And I was just so moved that they were friendly for a start. Yeah. And one of the kids gave me his catapult, so I did a bit of catapulting and all that. And then, and then they wanted to know my name and all that. And 
I, I was quite overcome. I was, it was very emotional, really, mm. because of how they had managed, managed to deal with the awful situation around them and still be smiling and still be welcoming mm. and still be open yeah, to me. Nice, that, was a, yeah. that was a lovely thing. Yeah. And I was getting a bit tearful. They always didn't want this at all. Come on, pull yourself together, <laughs> Palin. And they just smiled and wanted to take me and they showed me around and we met some of their, their parents who were preparing a meal and all that. But it was... The fact that they were trying to cheer me up, Isn't and they had this that, this yeah. humour and this welcome, which you'll find, you know, in 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 many places, but you wouldn't think it'd be in a half destroyed mm -hmm. city like that. But there it was, mm -hmm. and that was that was terrific, actually. Well, you you conquered your vertigo as well, didn't you? I conquered my vertigo, yeah, as well. Yeah, I think I don't know if it would be permanent, <laughs> but I was always slightly nervous of going tall places. Um, but I was able to go up this minaret. Um, and it's a beautiful old building. I mean, it's, it's built, I think, about 800 years ago. And, and, and there's no rail on the outside. There's only rail on the inside. So you oh, have wow. to get used to your vertigo fairly quickly. Passing there are all people, sorts of people you meet on the way. Yeah, and on the phone, little mean? kids running up and down. Where are you from? I'm, I'm, don't, don't ask me now, please. I'm trying to overcome my vertigo. <laughs> but, oh, my God, that's extraordinary. Yeah, it's, it's, like it's that. incredible. This is the bit I wouldn't like. Like, who yes. lets go of the hand? Oh, this is it, yeah. Is there like a... Ooh, that was nice of you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you very you much. fall off, not me. But there I am on the top. I mean, that was just... You know, I'm not quite at the top there. That was stunning. That's incredible. But the first time I got to the very top, there I am on the top. Oh, wow. And I had to do a sort of piece to camera. And it was like me... It's like someone doing a forced confession under torture. You know, it was so unrelaxed and I was like that. And then suddenly the second time, I completely relaxed. Yeah. I realised where I was and I could see right out over this plain of the Tigris and the Euphrates. And, I'd, yeah, I had to, <laughs> conquered my vertigo mm -hmm. somehow. Um, and I think it was to do with the tower itself. Eight, for 800 years, people had been walking up and down that tower. There were men, women, children, people on the phone. If they can do it, I could do it. Uh, mm. And so I think that was why I was able to, to get over that. What does your wife think of all this? Well, my wife, she, she, she wasn't... Well, she's generally quite keen on me doing long journeys, which is something we, you know, <laughs> I, I worry about a bit. But uh, Iraq, no, she didn't want me to go to Iraq. She didn't want me to go to North Korea either. She but she's very you. tolerant. We've been married a long time, and she knows that if I didn't go and didn't travel, I'd be impossible to live with, because I'd be keep saying, oh, if I were in Iraq now, I'd be, I'd be seeing the ziggurat of Ur or something like mm. that. So she said, well, go, but look after yourself. And there was a rather wonderful moment because it was my, my eldest grandson's birthday when we were just going on the border into Iraq. And I realised I'd better ring, ring him up and I said, Archie, I'm sorry I won't be able to be at your birthday because I'm going to Iraq tomorrow. And he just said, oh, well, Grandpa, stay alive till the next <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, bless him. That oh, that's lovely. It's lovely to have you. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, this, is the, this is the book, Michael Palin, uh, Into uh, Iraq. And there it is.